Well, I'm absolutely delighted now to be joined by uh, Dr. Tony Fauci. Uh, Dr. Fauci, welcome. Good to be here. Thank you for joining us today. My pleasure. Beautiful sunny morning. Indeed it is. Now, you bring good news to the conference that uh, you can see an end to the uh, HIV AIDS pandemic. Well, I would call it cautious optimism. <laughs> I don't want anyone to get the idea that it's over and we can move on to something else. But what's happened over the last 10 years with the implementation of very effective treatments as well as some very effective prevention modalities, we have seen at first a gradual, but now a pretty substantial decrease in certain regions, not every region of the world, not only of in, in new infections, but in deaths. And th there's a, a terminology called the tipping point, when the number of people going on to therapy exceed the number of people who are newly infected. Then when you mathematically model it, the trajectory of the epidemic starts to go down. And that's what's happening. It's by no means near the end, right. but it's going now in the right direction, when for 20 plus years it was doing this. So what did you put that tipping point down to? Well, you know, the tipping point, I believe, has to do with a combination of prevention modalities that work, people starting to utilize them, but probably most importantly, is the issue of what we call treatment as prevention. Right. Because unlike some diseases, HIV is a chronic viral disease. So if a person has a level of virus and transmits the infection to a sexual partner or injection drug user, if you can get that level of virus below detectable level, it makes it exceedingly difficult for one person to transmit it from one to another. And so the very fact that you seek out, test, and treat people, you're doing two things. We call it a twofer. One, you're saving their lives because you're getting the virus under control, sure. but you're dramatically diminishing the likelihood that they're going to infect someone else. And that really is the major driving force of this. Is this partly down to resources? Because a lot of money has been directed for fighting HIV AIDS, isn't it? Well, an extraordinary amount, both from the research standpoint and from the implementation standpoint. The National Institutes of Health, which is the major funder of research for HIV AIDS, has about 10% of our entire budget is for HIV. That is substantial. Now, one can argue that that's disproportionately high, but it got that high because of the raging nature of the epidemic. The other thing is implementation. There's a program called the President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief, or PEPFAR, which President George Bush established, which is the largest program from the standpoint of resources, measured in billions and billions of dollars, to bring treatment, prevention, and care to the developing world, particularly Sub-Saharan Africa. So the investment in research resources and implementation resources have been extraordinary. Finally, uh, how do urologists get involved with this? Well, there are a lot of things that you might not uh, at, at first glance feel are related to urology, but first of all, erectile dysfunction is one. The other one is sexually transmitted diseases. But in the developing world, not necessarily here, but adult male medically supervised circumcision decreases dramatically. Then there are kidney functions. Now that people are living longer because they're on antiretroviral therapy, there are a number of issues that are arising, tumors, kidney failure, uh, urinary tract infections, a variety of other issues. Well, thank you ever so much indeed for joining us today. It's been fascinating. Good thank to you. be with you.